Hello everybody, Jet here, and welcome to a new playthrough, where today I will be playing some Imperator Rome. Uh, and a very, very big thank you to Paradox Interactive, who have given me early access to this, guys. Um, just a quick one with that, this is obviously an early access build, uh, so it's a review build, so there may be bugs, there, there may be a few issues which won't be the same in the uh, end game, so obviously you always bear with it with anything I do get early access to. Again, really big pa thank you to Paradox. I've been really looking forward to playing this game. Um, and um, if you are looking at this, it is linked down in the comments if you are enjoying it. I'm also going to potentially look at doing some multiplayer with this at some point if I get time. Anyway, let's stop going on about things and jump straight in. So, you can tell I've been playing a bit. I've had a bit of a practice with starting a new game, however. While we uh, generate the world. I don't get why it says loading save game, because it's not really a save game, but... And we are, today, I'm not going to play any of the big powers, though you can play all the big powers. Yeah, there's all the massive powers, and Rome is still nice and small here. But I'm not going to be playing Rome, because Rome, I am going to be playing as the Iceni in Britain. And if you know your Britannic history, or your Roman history, Iceni are the one, the tribe which had our... Um, Boudicca or Bodicea, depending on how you want to, want to pronounce her. I'm not sure which is actually correct. And my goal is going to be to create Albion, which you can create if you conquer and settle all of the all of uh, the Isles of Great Britain or Britannicum. You uh, you can create um, Albion, and that is my aim for the campaign. Once we're there, we may look at other things, but to start with, obviously. We're just playing as Iceni, and um, interestingly, I have a different u ruler than the last time I did it. Uh, but let's jump straight in. So let's have a quick look around my nation. I've got a couple of stacks here, which are what well, they're lords, leaders like six and four, so they're not bad. Um, now. Basically, I'll, I'll go through things as we hit them and talk about them, guys. Um, I'm not doing a teach you how to play here. Uh, there's lots of... Uh, Paradox have done some really good uh, actual Let's Play videos for that. Uh, if you go look for them, the Trial and Errors one. Uh, basically showing people how to play and how to do the basics of this. So I'm not going to step on their toes. That said, um, I will go through the basics. Obviously, we've got lots of different things along here which we can do, and these are all of my different, you know, income, manpower, which is how many people I can recruit for armies, military power, which I can spend on military things, civic on civic things, oratory on oratory things, religious on religious things, and my stability, aggressive expansion, and corrupt and tyranny. I will come to all them later. Right, bad research ratio. We are a tribe, so that's not going to be something we're going to worry about. Unused trade. The first thing you always want to do a trade is make sure you don't trade away your surpluses. Because if you've got a surplus of something like we have furs in my capital, I can, you know, I gain benefits from that. So, hmm. What do I want to get in? I'm going to get grain. There's lots of options. It tells you what you gain on everyone, but grain it gives me manpower. Uh, surplus manpower, um, you know, national manpower, so that's going to benefit us massively, and we're going to get that from Durad, however I pronounce that place. Okay, now, I, as I said, I have done a few things, so we're going to do a few things right away here. First thing I'm going to do is speak to uh, Debonia, who are quite a powerful little uh, nation next to me, and we are going to offer them an alliance to try and bring them, make sure they're friendly. My navy lacks commander, I don't really care about that. To the point I'm just going to drop my navy at the moment, because they're just costing me money. And we have an invention we can do. Um, basically, inventions use civic power, it costs 100 civic power. As you level up, you get more, and, as you get higher levels of tech, you get more and more and more. As a settled tribe, uh, that's my type of nation, uh, this is going to go up very slowly, because you need citizens. And, and in, your pops need to be citizens, so your population need to be citizens. As a tribe, I don't have many citizens. Anyway, we need to go back to inventions here. Where is it hiding? I can never remember which one's which. Um, technology. We are going to go straight for aggressive protection. So increasing, making fabricating claims a bit cheaper, guys. And then we're going to fabricate a claim. Now, I am technically missing something. Some people watching this are going to be, why didn't I do these first? I'm not doing these first. I'll come back to my ideas, um, which again cost oratory power later on. But um, 
And they are worth doing because they do give you buffs. But I'm doing this because I want to expand quickly. So we're instantly going to fabricate a uh, claim against the Trivanan Tri Trin Ovantia. Uh, so. Covert actions. Fabricate claim on the province of Icenia, which is half of my province, so it should be mine, because I am the Iceni. And we are, at the same time as this, we are going to start recruiting units. So, nice thing we do have here is we, we can actually recruit warriors, which are heavy infantry. Um, because we have iron as one of our resources, you actually do have a resource map somewhere in here, trade goods map, and we have iron. Now, not everybody has iron, and um, heavy infantry is much, much better. You can see what the units are good at by hovering over them. So you can see um, these guys are very good against light infantry, which is what we're mostly going to be coming up against. Very okay against archers, chariots, but basically for, for where we're fighting, they're going to be good. But they're also much more expensive, so I'm not going to get too many of them. Um, I'm going to put some chariots in as well for that flanking action. They're also very good versus light infantry. And some archers and skirmishers. Skirmishers are my light infantry guys. So, and we're going to hit these guys hard early on, and we're going to bring Debonia in to give us support. Um, let's speed up time a little bit. I can't instantly go to war because when you fabricate a claim, it takes a little bit to happen because effectively your diplomat's going there informing them of the claim. And then, once the diplomat is back, you can declare war. Ooh, the other thing I want to do, I'm going to change the tactics on my armies. Your armies, guys, they're laid out here. Obviously, you can see what's in it. So, these two armies are... To go into them, these are clan chief retinues. As I'm a tribal um, nation, I have clan chiefs. Uh, and one of the clan chiefs is the ruler of the nation, though he doesn't come with his own retinue. Um, and they are all, uh, basically they have their own retinues, which means they can go to civil war. Uh, you don't necessarily want them to have a big retinue, but it also means you've got a cheap standing army, which you're not necessarily having to pay for. Um, ooh, we can do an omen as well. Uh, I'll go to that in a second. Um, anyway, that's just what the clan chiefs are. And so they're not the same as my normal standing army which I'm going to move into here to start with. Somebody is trying to trade with us. Uh, they want to trade Irvenware, which will make, give us cheaper army maintenance and make us some money. So we'll do that. I can go to war now. So we're going to go to war with them. Our objective is take Icenia, which we've got to cost us Kelsus Belly for. That's a claim for. And we're going to call in our ally. And we are now at war. Where is the rest of my troops built? Are all my troops building here? Did I accidentally build them all in the same place? I appear to have accidentally built them all in the same place. That was dim of me. Right, let's assign a leader here. What's that buff? Ooh, no, I don't want minus negatives. Uh, well, we're going to go for the guy with the most martial. Martial! Dictates how well they do in battle. So having Malleus, he's my best leader there. And we're going to change that again. Oh, we're going to go for Bottleneck. Because that will actually give us the best buff when we have our heavy infantry and stuff in. And he's going to do a bit more recruiting. And go straight up there. Get everybody in here to fight this battle. Oh, why is that chariot in there? Never mind. Oh, they've invaded Debonia. Perfect. That's a really silly thing for them to have done. I'm not complaining. Speed off with some more. Oh, they're suing for peace. Already? Okay. We have received an offer of peace. Oh, let's pause. Um, from the... Prenty Land Power of that's them. Offering. They're offering Icenia. That's all of their provinces. So we are going to straight up accept that. That is really good. 
Um, as we are going to be expanding hard, fast, so we get some expressive, ex aggressive expansion for taking this, which obviously affects us, it, you know, reduces loyalty to subject states, we don't have any, lowers public order for people of different cultures, though well, we're fairly similar cultures here, so that's not too bad. Um, and we are going to lose that slowly, but, so I can up my popularity, um, we've got popularity of 10, or I can, uh, so we've got a choice of what to do with the enemy families, so their ruling classes, I can take them in, or I can deal with them, at the moment we're only small, so I'm not going to be taking them in. Long run, I will want to take a few in, simply because it will give me a various benefits to do so, such as just having more people in my nation uh, who can command armies and such. Um, reduce my aggressive expansion, I think, though it's not high. I'm going to up my popularity. Um, I can also imprison them, which I don't really see the benefit for, or I can just let them in, uh, decide the family. Um, so we are going to put them all to death, which increases my ruler's popularity. I'm a little surprised they insta-surrendered, but I'm not complaining. All of you guys can move together here. That is perfect. These guys are potentially my next target, but we've got to take some time now. Now, I guess we're just going to spend some time building up here, guys. I'm, I wasn't expecting that to be quite so quick. Let's split this out before it becomes loyal. Um, if you leave units in retinues, they can become loyal to the uh, retinue, which isn't necessarily good. It means I can't dis... Ah, it's already loyal. So I can't actually disband that unit now, which is a little annoying. But never mind. I'm sure we've changed these already. Never mind. So we did quite well. That's our, our first war over. And Icenia has expanded nicely. And it's, it's kick back and, and take our time a little bit now. All of these guys are going to merge together. What's that unit? I'm just going to disband the sixth warband rather than wasting time on it, if it will let me. Yeah. I can always put a few more troops up later on. I don't want to be spending money and manpower. I don't need to be. Um... Ooh, we, we didn't use our omen. Uh, I'm going to up my tax. So omens, guys, you can spend our religious power to uh, to create an omen. Uh, basically, they all give you different buffs. Discipline is good for your armies. Manpower is obviously good for having more manpower. Uh, commerce, but for the moment, I'm going to go straight for a bit more tax rate. 23% tax rate is quite nice. And I've got a new invention. Uh... Again, I'm going to go for tax. I'm not going to go through every single option on them. And as we do things, we will go through them, guys. I'm also going to be looking at some other things shortly. But for now, I'm just going to take my time. Let's have a look at my regions. So in the new region we took, we are trying to uh, slowly convert people. We've got cultural assimilation, which means we convert them to the Iceni population. Um... Sorry, the Iceni culture, which isn't bad, but for now we are just going to take our time. Speeding up time a little bit, just so we got stuff going on. Okay, and we've hit 50 oratory power, which means I want the first thing I want to do, I want to get one of my ideas. Now you've got, only, we're only small, so we've got two ideas. As we get bigger, we'll get more. This gives us a benefit, so we get centralization, which makes us more civilized. Sorry, civilization, which makes us more civilized, which it gives us more citizens and things. It is something I want to do long run, but I'm not so fast. Also buffs up my leader slightly. Um, right. We only have access to certain things. We'll get more through research. So military, uh... Better morale for armies is very good. I don't care about Trireme Cross. I don't care about that. Uh, ooh, I'm, first thing I actually want is I want the uh, oratory idea. And we are going to go for the uh, military administration, which gives us loyalty, which actually does help with your tribal chiefs, apparently. So 
these guys will now be gaining slightly more loyalty due to that. Yeah, military administration. That said, tribal chiefs will, I find they're notoriously disloyal, you know, because they've got a big standing army and they get, they get ideas. And basically, it's something you've got to manage. There are various ways to manage it, but we've always had a child born to our tribal chief. Uh, but, you know, as time goes on, they will slowly become disloyal and you will in inevitably have to take a few out in civil wars and things, but that's not too difficult to do. Oh, our ruler is unmarried. Let's arrange a marry marriage. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, wow, she's corrupt. Oh, diplomatic relations, but it's only if ruler. Uh, I'm not going to spend a huge amount of time on this. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll marry our bodyguard. That sounds good. Not quite sure how we had a child when we weren't married, but let's not go there. Okay, so now it's just chilling, taking our time, and keeping an eye on the people around us, because at some point... We are going to want to go to war with somebody else, because we need to keep expanding, guys. Ooh. A petitioner approaches, a strapping young adult by the name of Etruvius. Oh, I'm not even going to try. Approaches our tribal chief in private this morning. In hushed voices, he spoke of, of our vision of the near future, with, in which he was found by his loved ones, having been richly sacrificed with shaking hands. He offers all his worldly goods to the state. Ooh, convince him, I want the oratory power. So that's not much. I want the oratory power at the moment, because that means we can get our next idea, giving us the buffs. Uh, we're going to go, I mentioned morale, so we're going to go straight for morale there. And now we have the buff. And now we can start preparing for war. Next thing is going to be, we're going to go against these guys, is who I usually go for. Though, we'll play the political situation. I have uh, accidentally gone to war with them before when they were allied with some with um, lots of other people. And it didn't end well. At this point, you can still very easily be swallowed up if you make a mistake. I'd better unpause the game. Let's have a look around the map. So we've obviously got Rome down here who, oh, they are fighting something. We've got lots of people. And you can see right across the world to see what is going on, which is quite cool. Other than for the moment here, I don't care about this. I can't actually do any diplomacy with them. If I go to diplomatic map mode, that's as far as I can see with my current size of nation. So, um, oh no, that, that's not right. Uh, diplomatic range... Nope, there is a way of seeing it. These are quite cool because you've got lots of different options. Where is it? They're obviously just people I have something to deal with. But basically, yeah, yeah, there it is. So this area in white is who I can actually deal with. So even though there's nations over here, they are miles outside of my diplomatic range. I'm quite surprised my range is so so long. So basically, I can interact with anybody up to this sort of range. Beyond that, I can't. So I can't interact with the likes of Rome yet. Ooh. Mm. Yeah, I'll accept that. Oh, and who are the Corvii? Corvone. Am I really asking who the, who the, who the, who the Cordovii are? I'm, I'm from here. I should know. Yeah, I'm going to accept that one. Uh, yeah, Freeman output, money. Are they still also my ally? Yeah, decline. them off. 
you can go join that. Okay, I have only a fort there. I'm still allied with them, okay. Uh, but I'm also in defensive league, is it? I thought I was joining them in defensive league. Uh, I am. So they're, they're basically, they're just, just guaranteeing. Oh, there we are. They're guaranteeing if I get attacked, they will come to my aid. And I guess I'm doing the same. Though I don't necessarily take the lead on that. Ooh, friends in high places. Rusa Ika, for reasons known only to her, has begun voicing her opinion in support of... In the can of cancer says, such syncopatic actions may be tiresome, but a voice... Four is better than a voice against. Um, that's my leader. Um, um, well, this, that, that's negative. Whereas that's good. So, okay. Increasing loyalty only seems good to me. I'm just upping the speed a little bit while things go on. The only thing about being a defensive league is I may get drawn into the odd war I didn't ne don't necessarily want to be in. So maybe that wasn't the best idea. Maybe I should have just kept the alliance rather than joining a defensive league. But keeping them all on side for the moment seems like a good idea. We've got quite a good strong power block there. Especially as there are Brigantia is very strong. Ooh. There we've gained forgiving... As a trait. Ooh, well, a child is born. The crow and the eye have left. Wait. I'm confused by that. We've got another invention, though. Um. Oh, there's one down here. Army morale recovery. Again, it's very good. I mean, morale is quite important in battles. If you've got low morale, your army will just retreat very quickly. So, I'm going fast simply because I want to, uh, well, I want to keep, get things going here. Um, let's go through things while we've got this. Obviously, we can see our economy here, how we're doing. You can change various rates, which affect various things. Um, unsurprisingly, so your army maintenance less makes them a lot worse. Upping them increases their cost, but does also improves their effectiveness. Um, decisions. This is how I will eventually form Albion, but I've got to control all of Albion and meet all of the uh, all of the actions there. Mercenaries. We'll deal with that when we get there. This is all the characters in my thing and my families. Uh, families are power blocks. If you if a family, oh, we've got something happening in the background we're doing trade with, uh, yep. I don't see why I would not accept most of these. Um, basically families, if you're friendly with an entire family, they will, everybody in that family will generally stay relative, you know, it, it helps keep the people relatively loyal to you and you do that by giving people positions. If nobody in the family has a position, they become a scorned family. Which makes them all negative. Uh, nope, I don't want an alliance with you. I've got my allies. Uh, okay. Wow, we have the same thing again. Uh, I'm going to take the oratory power again, because that's going to get us in a position where we can potentially start this war. Oh, look around. Work out who's... the easiest thing to attack. These guys. They do have an ally, but I'll bring Debonia in as well. I think now we start building up a bit, because we've got a reasonable income. Ooh. So let's pause for a second, and let's start recruiting a few more units here. Uh. What am I lacking? Do that to start with and see how my income is. Obviously, my manpower is burning off, but that slowly increases. 
Um, we're potentially going to have some public order issues as we do expand, but we can deal with that. My, my aggressive expansion is dropping, so... This doesn't necessarily always change straight away, so... I want a nice, powerful force here to um, watch the borders. No, it's going to drop. Now, we should be able to afford that. If we're running a slight negative, that's not too bad. There we go. That's pretty much perfectly balanced. Ooh! Ooh, ooh, ooh! Something's happened. They've just broken their alliance with their... Oh, this is perfect. So these guys have broken up. Some, which means one of them was planning on attacking the other. We've got another invention. Extra omen power. What omen am I running? How is my omen still running? It is still running. Let's get our butts down on this border. You can go into the middle so you've got my big army in the middle. We want to get this war going fast. I suspect these two guys were planning on going to war with each other. Um, which is why they've broken up, but now these guys are all on their own. This is the perfect time to jump in at them. Bring our allies. Oh, they... Oh, they can't. They've got a truce with them. Can I do this on my own? They're definitely not allied with anybody, so we've got to give it a go. It's a bit annoying I can't call my allies in, but... Oh, I can now call them to aid. Weird. Just gonna slam into their borders here and take them as quickly as we can. Keep my armies relatively close so I can reinforce if we do get attacked. There, there's their big army. We should win this first battle there. That says we're it, gonna, it, there's imminent battle which we're expecting to win. We'll reinforce that quickly enough. They've got such low. So you can go there. You're locked in already. Nice. I'm gonna march straight on the capital with my main force now to try and batter them back. Where are they? Okay, these guys, last time I fought these guys, they had multiple forts. I'm not complaining they don't, that makes my life much, much easier. Oh, that's not going to be quite... Uh, well, we're fighting it anyway. There, we'll win that. Oh, they're sending reinforcements. That's not necessarily the best bet for them, but... We got this. I mean, it's just a matter of sieging down their fortress here, which just takes time, guys. I don't know exactly how the maths behind it works. If somebody knows and wants to shout out to me, I'm sure it's been explained. This, this looks to be going quite well. I'll rephrase that. We completely and utterly battered them, guys. So, yeah. I'm not quite sure why I was saying it wasn't the odds weren't sure there. Not 
sure where they're retreating to, but we'll try and catch. Oh, they're retreating onto their boats. Oh, they could actually sail around and invade. So I'm going to send this stack up onto my coast just in case. And this is where maybe keeping an army would have been good. Sorry, a um, uh, navy would have been good. Oh no, they're considering leaving us, I don't care. Oh, uh, that's nothing to do with us. That's on the other side of the world, so again, I don't really care. Um, okay, another event. So we come across, I suppose you come across a foreign agent in our c uh, court. He is advised us to close the court down. Well, not only was limited potential, mm, does not seem like a feasible solution or abide with danger. We lose 100 oratory power. He loses five prominence. Uh, my lord, is, is that my lord? Yeah. Uh, how prominent is he? He's he's fairly prominent. I can I can soak that, and we get a bit of extra loyalty. I'll take the negatives there. I think we've got this, guys. I'm going to speed up time a little bit just to finish this off quicker. And that will expand the Iceni lands nicely. And again, these guys are now all on their lonesome, so maybe. Oh, wow, though we have burnt off quite... We're in negative oratory power. That's not good. Um... We'll work it out. Come on. Basically, we, this is just the maths behind this as we go. Um, eventually, they will surrender. It rolls a dice each time, and basically what the dice does depends on what happens. So a 36% chance of surrender. Um, and defenders deserting, so, you know. It's going to go on for a while, though. Ah, there we go. Pause. And let us sue for peace. And we want to take everything. Which is going to give us free aggressive expansion. I am going to uh, reduce our aggressive expansion this time. And we now have a disloyal province, which is the one we just took. It's hardly surprising. But guys, I am going to leave that one here. So we're not doing badly. Uh, we will pick this up again next time. We'll look at the disloyal province and all of that. Um, work out what to do with that. And yes, and look at continuing our um, campaign of domination of Britannia and form forming of Albion, guys. As always, thank you very much for watching. Um, this is something new. I generally do turn-based games, so uh, feedback is more than welcome. If you have enjoyed this uh, as well, or you want to pop any comments or feedback, please do that in the comments or jump over to my Discord and say hi. There is a link to my Discord in the comments and the description, as well as links to my Twitter, my Patreon, and my affiliations with Overclockers and Fnaf and Humble Bundle Games, guys, where you can pick this up. That is linked down below in the comments and the description. Um, as always, if you have enjoyed this and want to see more content like this, please like and subscribe. Any other factions or nations you want me to do, just shout out and we'll have a look at doing them at some point. Um, other than that, guys, thank you very much for watching.